Being on the ventilator has not curbed my lifestyle. This is a 10 out of 10 acquisition. And in fact, one of the curators said to me when they learned that it was coming to the Science Museum, it's a real legacy moment because this is a major acquisition for the Science Museum. Um, it really is up there with the sort of premier division of things that we've collected over the past 150 years. It's that important. Where he used to like to mix bets with other scientists. Um, and so with uh, John Preston there, the trouble is with information being found outside of black hole again, it's pretty generous and it's completely not fit together. And there's a really big problem when you're trying to find a theory, <coughs> one theory of everything, that fits some of the questions you have to walk the over. What's the mechanism by which information is put in You know, basically a letter from the palace turning up unexpectedly at the house when she was a kid. Um, and he was a bit surprised to get celebrity wise. Um, but something like the, the paper map, he was a member of the, uh, the Pontificate Academy of Science, so he would joke that... Thank you very much. Uh, my father would be so pleased and I think maybe at the same time just a tiny bit overwhelmed that he was going to form part of the story of history of science, that he was going to be alongside the great scientists, the people whose work he really admired. And I think for him, because he was quite a modest man, that part of him would feel just a little bit sort of taken aback and overwhelmed that this had happened to him. Um, so earlier... Um, so, so these are these have slowed down quite a lot. So I think, I think earlier on he would have been able to do about twenty words a minute. Near the end of his life, that's slowed to like Yeah, yeah. So essentially, um, in the collection, there's, there's sensors. There's quite a few glasses in the collection that are like they're development ones for testing because they they tried initially buying glass. Communications equipment is a fantastic piece of the collection in its own right. Um, because it belongs to the office. I'm really moved by the sight of his spectacles. It's a pair of tortoiseshell spectacles that I can just imagine him putting them on. Um, and so that's very emotional for me. But also they're actually very important because they have a little sensor on the side of them. And it's this sensor which allows him to communicate because the sensor judges the distance from his cheek muscles, just a twitch of the cheek muscle. 
that allowed him to control the cursor on his computer keyboard. So when you think about that, it really sort of gives you a way to understand the dedication he had to communicating. At Cambridge, he stands now with his archive alongside the greats, Newton, Darwin and Hawking, all of their archives, their papers under one roof, preserved for all time for the world at Cambridge University Library. And that is so important because not only was Stephen Hawking such an extraordinary scientist, but he was also a public figure that touched our lives. And we have to relate that both to his, uh, the way in which he put himself uh, into the world to tell the story of science and to break down the boundaries uh, about science to, to, to young minds and, and advanced scholars, but also because of the extraordinary re resilience and determination um, as a profoundly disabled man. And that determination and that story is part of what the archive tells us and it's why it is so important and one of the reasons he was so important.